Welcome to Aggieland. Kyle Field, SRO, more than 106,000 strong as Texas A&M looks for redemption off the stunning loss to App State. And number 13, Miami, seeks a signature win in year one for Mario Cristobal. One of the great spots for college football. Traditions in this great cathedral. Chris Fowler, Kirk Curb Street, Holly Rhodes, Todd McShay doing us tonight. A lot to unpack in yes. this game. Let's do it. This is going to be a good one. The change of quarterback for AM, Max Johnson, the transfer from LSU, big 6'5 lefty, grew up in Athens, Georgia. His uncle, Mark Richt, ex Miami coach, here to watch him tonight. He was impressive last year for LSU. In his last start, he beat AM with a last minute touchdown pass. That's right. And, and I think his experience within the SEC, he had 14 starts while he, he was at LSU for a couple years before he came to College Station. Got beat out by Haynes King just because Haynes was in his third year in the system, the familiarity, understood the scheme. That's why he nudged out Max. But after a sluggish start, first couple games, Johnson gets to go. His main weapon at offense is Devon A. Chain. The running back is also. A kick returner with 10 to 200 meter speed. He took one to the house in the loss to App State and scored the only offensive touchdown. And there is Tyler Van Dyke, veteran Hurricane quarterback. Borregalis to boot it away. A chain from the goal line. Looking for a crease, sidesteps one tackler. He's dangerous. A chain trying to get free and then he tackled from behind. Limiting a touchdown with a tackle at the 36 yard line. Really, it's pretty good coverage here. I mean, my, this is what's dangerous with A chain, is he's got that speed, but look at that, breaks a tackle, makes another guy miss, and then his speed. And, and when he gets to the outside, it's very tough to slow him down. But Miami with decent uh, discipline with their with their lanes, but just breaks a tackle, and then he's got the speed to break away. Devontae Williams made the tackle. So Johnson and the Aggies begin from the 36 and there's already energy in here. They're very excited here about the quarterback change. Play action on first down pass rush. He gets it away checks it down and the catch is made by the tight end. Donovan Green. Now the motion by Anaya Smith indicates man to man. Everybody clears out. The linebackers actually went with the action in the backfield with a chain. They went with him. Nobody's out to the outside on the young freshman tight end. Donovan Green, he gets lost in man coverage. 18 yards on the first play. They figure to get Johnson some passes he's comfortable with, right? Oh, yeah, settle into a groove early. A chain on the delay again breaks a tackle. He'll be brought down after a short gain. Akeem Mesidor got him. Worth mentioning that this Texas A&M offense is coming off a, a very difficult loss to Appalachian State. They were sluggish. Jimbo Fisher talking about how he's got to get Bryce Foster back at center. One of the leaders has not played the first couple games because of mono. Anaya Smith is a great leader. We know about him and A-Chain. And then for Miami, you got to find some leadership. Corey Flagg, 11 in the middle of that defense. They feel Daryl Jackson, a transfer from Maryland, could be a great player. High snap. Second and five, A-chain up the middle. And he bursts inside the 30 to this Aggie offense clicking under the leadership of Johnson already. Now they've tried to attack the outside, and this time they do a good job with Max Wright. Right here, nice little block, opens it up underneath that block. And again, I think if you're not familiar with A-chain, he gets a lot of publicity because of how fast he is, but he will surprise you with the power in that lower body to be able to pull out of those arm tackles. Miami's got to do a good job of running to the football and trying to get shoulders on, on him and wrap up. Runs bigger than 185. Oh, yeah. Johnson from the pocket and first down delivers a throw again man open and that's Anaya Smith. You just talked about him. He's down near the 12. Watch Max Johnson's technique and every quarterback does it differently. Good job by mixing up run with pass. Watch his feet. A lot of guys like to move their feet. He just stands there. That's his rhythm. And you could tell that they did a nice job of giving him time. That was the question. Could AM do a nice job of holding up for Max Johnson? And you know that Anaya Smith's going to get separation against most players that are going to try to defend him in that slot in man to man coverage. It's a heck of a drive to start the game. A chain. 
runs right into the wall there. Caleb Johnson stopped him. And it, 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 this AM offense, it's almost like it, it, you watched him last week. Yeah. They, they couldn't do anything. They couldn't do and Now, you imagine the week of practice they had. They heard about how terrible they are. They had to go and see him every day. And he's not happy after loss to Appalachian State. But man, they have answered the call. Now, you got to finish the drive. It's tough in the red zone to be able to do that. But they have come out uh, in this first drive looking like a very different unit from a week ago. Only had 38 snaps. App State beat him a keep away. Johnson looking cool in the pocket. It's dropped. He chain out of the backfield. He's a competent receiver and had some space. He'd be caught. Yeah, yeah. and again with that speed, he, you know, he, he had a chance. But Miami, pretty good job. They sat back more in zone that time. They've been playing a lot of man to man, a little bit more matchup zone. And this is what's hurt. And again, Mac Johnson with those settled feet puts the ball where A-Chain can make a catch. But you can see Miami's got a couple guys there that could have made a play. But now you get a third down, right? You got to finish these drives. You don't want to settle for field goals. But it's plays like that that have really hurt AM. Penalties, drop balls, just not executing. They get a first down at the two. Johnson fell pressure, hit as he throws, and it's incomplete. Miami's been getting home with just that front, and Leonard Taylor was in the quarterback. That's space. a great point, Chris. Sometimes you wonder with Kevin Steele, is he going to bring the pressure, but you're just going to be able to shoot a gap here. And when you get pressure with just four, that tells you a lot about how Miami, especially on third down, the kind of night that they can have. They feel confident with this defensive front, rotating bodies. Leonard Taylor this time with his size and athletic ability to be disruptive. Change of kicker, Randy Bond, who's never made one in his career, in for Caden Davis, who missed badly at that potential game time field goal against App State and this little chip shot is knocked through to so the Aggies jump on top but stall inside the 10 eight plays 55 yards three zip second year kicker and he makes it 21 of 25 this oh. going to be a rolled R or two from I, 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 matching field goals on the opening drives midway first quarter tied up at three for a Gallus. Stevenson, more Miami, back to receive the punt of Nick Constantino. There are two Aussie punters in the game, so you're happy about that, Kirk. Melbourne, Australia, well represented tonight. The lefty gets his reverse spin punt away. It'll bounce and be fielded and muffed. And Texas A&M has come up with it. A mental mistake. And a disastrous result. And Texas A&M is set up inside the Miami 30. It looked like Chris Russell got down there and, and picked it up, the linebacker. But what a mistake by Miami. Unbelievable that Stevenson lets the ball bounce and then looks down to see if he should take it and takes the risk, takes his eyes off the ball because he knows he's about to get hit by Richardson. And then it's a free-for-all. And you can see right there the linebacker, Russell, Gets on top of that. See the eyes? Took the eyes off of the ball. Concerned about who's coming down. And then the mistake cost him. And AM see if they could take advantage of the field position. Stevenson, the transfer from Georgia. And now they hand the ball off to their main weapon, Devon A. Chain, the sprinter, who scored both AM touchdowns in the loss to App State. One with a run, one with a kick return. That's why you went on all three phases. You know, it's the offense, the defense. But do not overlook the importance of special teams, especially when you're on the road in this kind of environment. Got to avoid being, you know, having those disastrous plays, hurting yourself, something the A&M did last week against Appalachian State. But this time they're on the other end. They catch a break. Just a grimace from Cristobal. Exactly what his team did not need in this hostile environment. A chain on a delay, breaks free. Devon A chain with a stiff arm spins down. Did they grab the face mask at the end? He's out inside the five. He is electric. 10 2 2, 100 meter speed. Personal foul, face mask, defense number zero. And is half the distance to the goal. First down. Well, this play is designed to go to the right. He's going to follow the right guard, Layden Robinson. That's where A-Chain wants to go. But right here, he recognizes he's got trouble. And watch the patience and then the vision to be able to go back the other way. Gets behind the center's block. 
Bryce Foster, and then again, he's physical, and he has amazing acceleration. One of the fastest running backs in college football, and there's an obvious face mask at the end. Go heavy down here. Ernest Cranover, 230-pounder, in a fullback in front of L.J. Johnson. Old school eye formation. Johnson dives forward. Touchdown. And the Aggies waste no time cashing in the mental mistake. Three plays, 28 yards with a penalty, and Texas A&M gets the shot in the arm. This offense has sorely needed a short field, and they make short work of it. Well, this is just a good job here by Johnson going up and over the top of defense at Submarine, but Miami, a young football team on the road, trying to establish themselves, off to a pretty good start. They're able to get three and out, punt, but instead, Setting in the ball back, they have a fumble by Stevenson making a poor decision. A couple plays later, A-Chain moves them down close, and then L.J. Johnson goes up and over, and A&M takes advantage of it. Yeah. Big Shea joining us, and Todd, you're keeping a close eye, as a lot of NFL scouts are, and Tyler Van Dyke tonight. Yeah, and at the quarterback position, Chris, we're always looking for that special trait. With, with Tyler Van Dyke, when he knows where he wants to go with the football, it's his ability inside the pocket to carve you up on all three levels. First, it's the arm talent. Look at this throw. 35 yards down the field, a laser show, and the ability to place it perfectly. And then if you're not a great runner, you've got to have this pocket awareness. Look at him feel the outside pressure, climbing up, and then just flicks his wrist 30 yards down the field. Goes a slant to Michael Redding. Incomplete. Antonio Johnson, the nickelback, physically arrived and knocked it loose. You know, and Todd, I think last year with, when De'Ara King went down, I think everybody thought, oh boy, it's you know devastating. We all are huge fans of De'Ara and what he can do. And we knew Tyler Van Dyke through recruiting was a talented player coming out of Connecticut, but I think he wowed everybody with what he was able to do when he when he got a chance and really only got better as the season went on. But he's missing obviously the receivers that he worked with last year. From the pocket, a laser across the middle. Here comes a flag from the holding pit area. Jardine Gilbert on the coverage. Busy start for Jeff Heaser and this ACC crew. Number 70. Apelli's decline. Third down. Well, Lawasian guilty of the hole. Pretty obvious in there. Yeah, up to our left, the right guard gets beat off the ball. Pretty good job by Turner getting inside, and then he just wraps up around him to bring him down, prevent him from getting to the quarterback. But they decline, and now you got third and ten. Veteran quarterback trying to deal with the noise. That and get a good feel for what coverage they're in and what if they're stunning or blitzing up front. And Dyke has protection across the middle. Redding knocked loose again. The Aggies arriving and delivering blows. That time it was Damani Richardson. And the Canes go three and out with four seconds left in the quarter. Now that's on Van Dyke for putting him his receiver in harm's way. He had a couple underneath routes, the back out of the backfield, and then he leads him right into this. As a quarterback, you've got to feel that corner on the other side just sitting there in zone coverage. Receiver really never had a chance, and I'm sure Van Dyke's telling his receiver, that one's on me, that's my bad, I should have felt that. They're going to take a Previous peek to see if there was targeting. Potential targeting. Well, look at the crowd booing here. Brian George already has been disqualified for the game with a targeting. Now they're taking a look at Richardson. I mean, George lowered his helmet. Ooh. Bill Lemagne totally agreed with the first call of targeting tonight. Look, Bill, how do you see this one? He's got the crown of the helmet sure down does. again. He does. So they're in trouble when they do that. They're going to go with a targeting call here. I think they will, too. It's very similar to the last one as far as the technique. I mean, he's lowering. 
the helmet. I mean, that's why you guys put this rule in, right? It's for these kind of hits. These kind of to hits. To protect the defender. Yeah, because it crushes the neck. Right. Yeah. That's what they don't want to see right there. That's, I mean, it's really textbook along with the other one. Well, I'll tell you, if you have George, a corner out, Richardson is, is the leader, most experienced guy in that secondary. If. After further review, there is a personal foul targeting. So now they lose their leader, the guy that communicates back there. You remember you had Denver Harris and Smoke Bowie, the young DBs already suspended. Yeah. It's getting thin in a hurry back there. It really is, and I think you just brought something up. It's his 34th start. I mean, Richardson is a veteran, makes all the calls for DJ Durkin in the first year as a defensive coordinator. And while the offense has struggled and they lost to Appalachian State, the defense has been playing sound football, and you're taking away one of the leaders now in the middle of that defense, and they pick up a first down on that third down play. So now Bryce Anderson, a true freshman, is in its safety. And the Caves on the final play of the first quarter, a quick burst from Jalen Knighton, who does appear to be healthy, picks up eight, and frustration from Richardson. We'll have to watch from the sidelines. End of an eventful first quarter in College Station. 10 3 Aggies. You're watching ESPN College Football Primetime. It's always a great matchup. Both teams need that win. It's fun to see them collide early. Johnson hands off, and this is Amari Daniels, Miami Central High School product. So pumped up tonight. He'll know about half the game's roster, but probably played with them since he was five or six years old. Boy, they're pulling those linemen around and, and giving A chain a chance to kind of pick, just wait to the outside and then wait until he can actually, Tamari Daniels, just wait till he gets to the outside and then accelerate through that hole. Nice outside zone, pulling the linemen up front. Moko led the way there, 66. It has not been the offensive explosion many Yankee fans were hoping for when they put Johnson in. It's been a grinding effort. The ground game has been important. This is Daniels again. This time he is swarmed and knocked down just short of the marker. Chance Williams got him. Third and one coming up. Well, kind of new coming into this game. We'd have a heck of a battle up front. You know, the A and M. Even though they have an Ia Smith, they don't have just like Miami. They don't necessarily have that vertical threat. And so you're looking at running the ball with a chain. And hitting some of the underneath throws, intermediate throws. So you knew the pit would be a war on both sides, and it's really lived up to that. Short yardage backfield, crown over in front of Johnson. The same two guys who were lined up when they scored their short touchdown. This time it's just a first down across the 30. This time Kevin Steele on that short yardage, trying to get those linebackers to be able to hit a gap, shoot a gap at AM's offensive line. Really good job, especially the center. Man, it's good to see Bryce Foster back. In this lineup makes such a difference. Missed the first two games, battled with Mono for four or five weeks, back healthy, was their center all of last year. Just kind of anchoring them up front. Final two and a half minutes in the half, two timeouts for Jimbo Fisher to work with. Gonna keep it on the ground with Daniels. So Johnson comes in, has visions of sort of creating big plays, getting Anaya Smith involved, the other sprinters on this. Aggie receiving core they haven't been able to hook up for big no. plays yet with the pass game No, they just don't they don't have that vertical threat you know they, they don't have that guy that can stretch the defense I mean you have a guy like a Jalen Preston or Chase Lane that can from time to time but not consistently so if Miami doesn't feel threatened downfield a chain out of the backfield he's a threat but a nice open field tackle that's the way to get him down Cameron Kitchens that's a tough assignment against six in the open field now you take Evan Stewart, who's been suspended and not playing tonight. You take Chris Marshall out of the lineup, and you're looking at guys that that just are, are tough underneath. But you want to give them the ball in space, especially a chain out of the backfield. But a nice job there by Kinchins. This point, not a lot of urgency by Fisher, He's keeping those two timeouts, letting the clock run. He needs six on this third down. Off the play action, Johnson pump fakes and now checks it down to A-Chain. Defender fell down. That was James Williams. He gets up and makes the tackle, but it's a first down at the 47. Well, A-Chain does not get picked up. Look at him playing a lot of man-to-man, -man, but with the blitzing, the twist, the stunts, they're trying to get home. And of all the guys you want to left, 
leave alone. That's not the guy. Miami's going to call a quick timeout here to regroup. But yeah, you don't want to leave a chain alone there on a third down. See if the Aggies can make something with the final 53 seconds when you come back. And welcome back. Kyle Field is rocking here, ready for the second half on ESPN. College Football Primetime presented by Geico in this presentation of the SEC on ESPN. Dr. Pepper Championship Drive Game of the Week. Miami to get the football first to begin the second half, down by seven. It's been an old school first half. Chris Fowler, Kirk Kerb Street, Holly Road, Todd McShay. Both quarterbacks uncomfortable by the other defense. The running game's been the better choice for both offenses. Special teams miscues by Miami have made the difference. And Tyler Van Dyke and the offense comes back out. Todd McShay here to analyze this NFL prospect. What have you seen in the first 30? It's been a, it's been a tough go for Tyler so far. Yeah, it has, Chris. And we talked about him as a potential first-round pick because of the unique arm talent. The next step in his development is looking off safeties, being better with his eye discipline. You're going to see all first half. He's staring down his initial target, and that's allowing safeties to get back into the play. That was the initial play, and then a critical play here rolling out to his right. If he just looks off the safety down the middle of the field, he's going to buy himself an extra step. Now, listen, part of it's because of the receivers, yeah. but he's only 3 of 10 for 56 yards on throws beyond 5 yards. Running game, they feed Parrish, and the Aggies begin to swarm that. You know, and, and Todd, uh, the interesting thing is that this is a secondary that's that's depleted with suspensions, and, and you know, we've seen a couple guys been thrown out for targeting. See his numbers overall. I mean, it, this would be a secondary that would be ripe for that, you know, to be able to affect him with your eyes. Uh, we'll see if, it, you know, so kind of adjustments they make here in this second half as an offensive unit, including Van Dyke. And the catch made by Redding on the edge. You know, quarterbacks have their favorite reliable targets, and Xavier Restrepo is that for Van Dyke. He worked with him over the summer much more than these other guys. He's his roommate. He doesn't drop the ball. He's out with a foot injury, and it's made a huge difference, I think. If you go back to Charleston Rambo, who's no longer here, he moved on. Mike Harley, who's a great receiver, he's moved on. You know, they were looking at somebody to help Restrepo out, and you know, now that he's not here, your second half here, who's that guy going to be? And Parrish just stumbles to the ground. We know he's watching the game and, and send our best yeah. to him for a quick recovery. It'll be right out of the gate here. And with with him at home watching, uh, it, you know, we, we talk about the tight ends. You know, you got Arroyo, you've got Mowry who are capable. But really, if they're going to hit a big play, it's going to be, a, you know, Jacoby George. You got Keyshawn Smith, Rashard Smith. Somebody's going to have to make a play downfield. Otherwise, they're going to have to go 12 and 13, 14 plays to try to put points on the board. Jalen Knighton is certainly capable of creating out of the backfield. They have moved the ball. I mean, they've been in the red zone a couple times. He's a whistle. Mario, he, he just was, didn't like what he saw. He was trying to hurry them up to get them to run a play. I mean, he was winding his arm up, and you can see how frustrated he is that they had to use that first time out here early in the second half. Holly? Mario Cristobal of Miami was pleased with some things in the first half, but he said, we made too many mistakes. We hurt ourselves. The points we got on the board for Texas A&M were our fault. He did like their running game that it got going early, but he said they started to squeeze them, squeezing the counters, pulling those ends in too close. He wants to get back to that here in the second half. And then he said our passing game has to be more efficient. He thought in the red zone their passing was so inefficient. He just wants them to play good, clean football. And he yelled at his team as they ran by him out on the field. One play at a time. They're still right in this ball game. Yeah, that, that's kind of been their motto, Holly, as you know, in the talk that we had with them, like stay calm, play that next play. One play at a time, th fight through this adversity. Thing that, it, Holly, that report is great because this, the, the red zone area for them, not only not able to get, come away with some touchdowns, but it's, they have penalties, costly penalties on both red zone trips that put him behind the sticks. Pretty easy against Bethune Cookman and Southern Miss in the red zone. Not so far tonight. Van Dyke is flush and will just dive down after a short gain. Again, nobody open. Nobody open. I mean, he, he worked through, looked at, through his progressions, but DJ Durkin implementing some man, using those safeties, anything over the middle, they're, they're doubling up with safety support downfield. And he just had nobody to throw it underneath to. So another third down and long. Kane's had some success on third down early, but Lately, they've been third and too long. Now they're showing pressure. DJ Ward Durkin is running down the sideline. They're, they're checking with Miami to maybe get out of that pressure. 
Still communicating as the ball is snapped. They do bring pressure. Long throw inaccurate off the mark to Keyshawn Smith, who had a cushion there. That, that's an example we keep talking about working through and developing chemistry and you, you're going to anticipate and make this throw look when he throws this football I mean it, it's early right his receiver is not even close to being out of his break and that's a tough throw to, to make unless you're working with a receiver that you work all summer with and you work the timing out on a third down a long throw like that he gets the ball out anticipates which you love but the receiver and he just not quite on the same page that's on on Van Dyke well quick it, or the receiver it's it's him still learning everybody runs that out cut differently from a timing standpoint so they just got to continue to work on that tough to do in a game right Nia Smith backtracks to receive Headley's line drive punt and be knocked down at the 25 yard line so Miami empty in the first possession of the third quarter and back to work goes Max Johnson trying to get the Aggie pass game going. Attitude with it, you know, it running, throwing. Here's the keeper by Max Johnson. Not the blazing speed of Haynes King, but he's a competent runner, and that's the first time they've turned him loose tonight. It's a first down. Uh, he's reading Harvey. You know, he's he's been running this, and I thought that's kind of a, interesting that he's reading this in man, and he, I didn't know he would pull it, but it kind of surprises everybody. 6'5", 220, pulls it just enough to remind you you'd better respect him and not collapse, collapse down on these running backs. Johnson looks for a chain across the middle makes the catch check it to Nia Smith who breaks a tackle and still fighting for yardage slammed down and a flag comes in they'll add 15 to the end of the play Smith not maybe a burner but very crafty very strong with the football 25 yards plus 15 on James Williams here yeah, their most proven receiver most First reliable a chain works to the outside he goes out here and you'll see the linebacker go with him once he clears out man to man look at that nice throwing lane for Max Johnson to be able to get that in there this is what makes Anaya Smith so good he's a running back out there playing wide receiver and Miami another costly mistake here trying to bring him down Body slams up there by James Williams yeah, at 15 yards on this call the penalty was definitely zero So the Aggies suddenly set up at the 25 threatening to add to this lead Hey chain hit in the backfield and spun down for a loss. That's big Akeem Mesidor Strong speedy smart savvy does his homework And Max Johnson like to have that one back Mesidor fooled him see his reaction he's reading again the zone read here by the big man he collapses down he's got to pull that watch 14 oh he's frustrated with himself <laughs> knows he should have pulled that and went around that edge little wrinkle here for the Aggie offense that yeah Kane's defense not quite expecting he's trying to keep the edge defender off of a chain Smith goes in motion Johnson looks for A-Chain out of the backfield, breaks a tackle. Devon A-Chain still running. He'll score. Canes have not been able to get him to the ground all night. Now they got man-to-man -man situation with a backer on A-Chain. And this is what you want give him enough room after the catch to be able to make a guy miss and then you get him in open field He can make a lot of guys miss. he and Anaya Smith are both the most dangerous weapons that Max Johnson has to work with He hit them both on that drive and a chain takes it in So a chains third touchdown in the last couple of games Two 25 yard chunk plays a 15 yard penalty and just like that the Aggies are up 14 and our new ESPN sports injury analyst, Marty Jaramillo. You'll see Marty across all platforms, different sports. He brings decades of experience. Marty, welcome. We've been talking about Bryce Foster, the center for the Aggies, who is coming back after a bout with Mana. Why that's a concern for a football player and why getting back to game speed is such a challenge. Well, what he is doing today is absolutely remarkable. He battled 
weight loss. He battles severe fatigue. And Mono is taken very seriously by the medical staffs because the spleen can actually enlarge and you have to stay out of all contact sports, vigorous exercise. And not only did he battle what he, uh, the weight loss and the conditioning issues and fatigue, he is battling tonight. Oh, my God. I am so impressed. I expected him to be sharing snaps, and he is protecting Max Johnson to a T, a sign of that world-class athlete he is and that incredible shot putter he is doing double duty for the Aggies. Yeah, Marty, we thought he'd be limited. He's been out there, and he's been making a difference on that Aggie offensive line, Kirk. Marty, I can tell you, not only do you know medicine, you know football, because, boy, did they miss him last week. You know, they... They didn't have the leadership. There he is right there. This guy played as a true freshman. And they said having him inserted back in the lineup is going to be a big difference. And you, you've seen it. I think we've all seen it, right? But he's winded between series. I see him, but he's digging down. Unbelievable recovery. Unbelievable reco recovery. A little credit to his mom who clarified the fact that he recovered from Mono. There's a keeper by Tyler Van Dyke. Marty, it'll be great to have you with us. Various different injuries that guys bring into games that happen within a game and uh, we appreciate you being here oh, I'm excited thank you so much <laughs> Marty's done good work on me too a full disclosure he's oh, yeah. mended me Kirk a few times well whatever he's doing is working on you oh. pumping pump the iron I mean yeah, okay all right big get older you get bigger I don't know what's going on arms nothing's going on besides hard work pro I promise I, I could, <laughs> what are you insinuating <laughs> Well, there's a handoff to Knighton. See if he can spark oh, this game's offense. The other down 14. It's it's not panic time. But they just have not been able to create any shock plays. Yeah, so Clark, Clark the center, really good job of sustaining his block. And then I'll tell you, the guy who's having a heck of a night is River 64. Watch the center. He gets he's able to hold on to his block. 64 seals that. And then you got all that room to work with. And again, Knighton is. He's had some holes, and he shows you what kind of acceleration. Still early enough in this game, you've got to trust that line in this running game. Man, Dyke pulls it, rolls, slings it down. Field had a man, but just over the hands of Keyshawn Smith. They continue to try to stretch the defense, but haven't connected. That's the man that is going to have to do it. You know, Smith is the, probably the most dangerous target they have. Came to Miami all the way from San Diego, went to Lincoln High School. You run the ball, you run the ball, you get the safeties down. See the safeties collapse down. Now you got the one on one opportunity. A little bit more air on that, and he maybe had a shot to get underneath it. He can move, but history says that Van Dyke is way more effective inside the pocket than out of it. Knighton runs through a couple tackles and gets slammed down. He's actually hurt inside the pocket. He's thrown 26 of his 28. Career touchdown pass. He can make plays. He's just not as comfortable. Yeah, there. yeah. I mean, his strength is sitting in the pocket. He's athletic enough that if he has to, he can move around. But yeah, he, he obviously rather sit in that pocket, distribute the ball, and been a challenge tonight without his main target, trying to break these younger receivers in. Van Dyke 0 for 3 passing on third down. Now charging in very early is Terry and Lee. And that'll move it uh, a little closer. It'll be third and very short now. Watch Van Dyke here. Smart on third down. He's he's really selling this count. But he's been doing it all night. But this is watch the quarterback's Outside. energy. Watch his Defense shoulders. Really leans in. Really tries to, to sell it on the road. Even with that with that noise. Sometimes it's your body language where you try to draw that draw that defense off. And he timed it up at the right time. Third down. He picks up the first down. It was enough to move the sticks. Last thing you might have to do if you're the Aggies is breathe life into this Miami team. Henry Parrish back in the backfield. They fake it to him, flip it to Mallory, and finally the tight end's got some space. Big fella's been contained all night, but he is a weapon and rumbles down to the 36. So when you run the ball, it allows early down play action to be effective because the eyes of this defense get into the backfield. Watch the defense. All these linebackers are concerned about, oh, they're going to run the ball again. They lose their responsibility. Nobody takes the tight end that is able to slide out. So really good job here with the play calling that time by Josh Gaddis. First and 10 play action, slide the tight end in the flat, get those backers' eyes worried about running the football between the tackles. Arroyo spells him a tight end. It's Brinson in motion. They throw it to him behind the line in the open field. Makes one man miss, but can't get a block on the edge and is forced out. 
for a one yard loss by Antonio Johnson Nickelback. Yeah, I'll tell you, Bryce Anderson I wondered how a true freshman and there are a lot of true freshmen in this two deep. They've recruited obviously very well but when Damani Richardson the leader on the back end went out with a targeting call 34 starts went with him. You bring in a true freshman Bryce Anderson and up to this point young man has held his own on the back end. Nine true freshmen have played on defense for this Aggie team. It's a talented recruiting class but these guys are learning on the fly. Yeah, yeah you're learning with every rep but number one's playing well. Van Dyke with the play clock ticking down. And second and ten pitches to Parrish and for the short side of the field just not much room Edron Cooper edged him out it'll be third and long now they lost two starting linebackers inside linebackers off this defense and Cooper played but he didn't start and now 45 watch him able to get sideline to sideline DJ Scaped tried to climb up to that second level to be able to secure that edge but no way instincts and vision by the backer 45 he gets a, he's able to get outside there or he had an alley if he wasn't able to do that around the edge maybe for a first it's fringe field goal range and Bora Gallus has missed two so Cristobal and Gaddis may be thinking two plays to get these eight yards and Dyke with three on the play clock gets it into Jacoby George and he has got a crease makes a cut Jacoby George hurdles a man welcome back from a two game suspension his first action and his there's, First and goal. That's their maybe the coaches would tell you one of their best playmakers. He sees this cushion right here. It's two on two to the left of that receiver. They've got to make those blocks. He's got to outrun the man that had him. He did it. They secure their blocks. Easy execution, but you're relying on the talented receiver, George, to be able to run away from that cushion that that defender put on him. Now they're down inside the 10. Knighton dives forward. At this point, Kirk, Miami, which is not executed well in the red zone, had a penalty early. Crucial to get this into the end zone here down by 14. Yeah, they've hurt themselves a couple times. They've been down in the red zone executing pretty well. I mean, again, they've got to sustain drives. You know, this is a 10 play drive so far. Don't have that dynamic playmaker. Can they finish the drives and put the ball in the end zone? First and goal from the 10 against a tough defense is a challenge. Quarterback keeper. And that time Isaiah Rakes is ready for him. So that's an unusual call. They don't have many design runs for Van Dyke, and it's third down. And I thought they might be fooled by this call, but watch the big fella 34 Rakes. Watch him keep that outside shoulder freed up. Eyes in the backfield, and then he's able to get down to the outside and make a play. You're talking about a big body there, 330 pounds. I love to see his eyes in the backfield, not fooled at all. Knighton is the back three receivers to the right. But with a safety here with one receiver he's got to work to the right and the question is can he get the ball to the big tight end. Hurry. Bowery. They just get the snap off. It's a running ball. Maybe they checked it down to Knighton. Bryce Anderson that freshman you talked about flies in there and it's fourth down and field goal team is coming out. Wow really interesting conservative call by Mario Cristobal here and Josh Gaddis. Play Three clock, runs. Play clock working down. The run game has been working, but boy, it's it, it's the execution and everything much tighter, much faster down there. AM bends, but they don't break. You surprised you're kicking the field goal, huh? Yeah, yeah, I am. Unless it's a fake. It's a chip shot. Oregalis two for four. Good looking drive, run pass mix, 12 plays, 71 yards, but again, settle for three. Lead still 11. That game could get could get interesting, but Fresno so far unable to get on the board. A chain back. See if uh, Borgalis gives him a chance to return it. Now that'll land in the end zone. Extra yard for Teachers Week, annual back to school effort led by the CFP. They recognize and show appreciation for teachers. And Jimbo Fisher's mother, Gloria, who's 85 years young, was for 51 years a teacher in high school chemistry and physics in West Virginia. She taught at the rival high school, the one that Jim How about that? football for. Jeez. All her students were like going against him on the football field, but he was just speaking with great admiration for his mom. And that's great. Half century of teaching. Unbelievable. Making a difference in so many lives.
That's a pretty good story that she's teaching at the rival school. You're watching Gloria. We salute you. Extra yard for teachers. Johnson on the run. He's made an impact as a runner here in the second oh. half and dives forward for six. Fella, yeah, like he said, Chris, he's been running a few zone reads. This time, I don't think he had any intention at all of throwing that football. He got outside, got behind Anias, who was out into the flat, and said, oh, you know, I, I can beat this linebacker and pick up some yards. I think he feels, you know, remember, he didn't start the first two games. That was his first half of football really all year. And I think he's starting to settle into the game and feel a lot better here in the second half. He was two for two on that last drive. You're not counting mop up against Sam Houston. No, <laughs> no, I'm sorry. <laughs> And I think you know you go back to 14 starts that he had at LSU and what you know whether it was great games or wins or losses it's irrelevant to me it's the experience he gained you know he a lot of people assumed he would win the starting job and the reason he didn't is Haynes King's running threat in this system and then also the knowledge of Jimbo Fisher's scheme third year in the system that's why they went with the hunch thinking Haynes would provide more and after two games they pulled the trigger to go back to Max Johnson and give him a chance at, and I think that background of the move starts helping. Big play for the Miami defense here to get off the field and give their offense the football back. They come after Johnson, pressure him, but he gets it away. And it complete across the middle. And Anaya Smith is still running. And he has been the playmaker on the receiving end here in the third quarter. He's across midfield. Well, they brought pressure this time. They dial it up. Again, it's been a little bit of a mixed bag. He had a little bit of a delay, and then eventually Smith is able to get there. Almost looked like he got to him right as he threw the ball, but that goes back to his size. 6'4", six, 6'5". Six, He's able to hang in there to the last second. And how much fun is Anaya Smith with the ball in his hands after he catches it? 26th straight game with a catch. The guy who'll put his hand up, he'll play running back. He'll play DB if they'll let him. He's just that kind of a tough physical player. Had a 25-yard catch in the last touchdown drive. That was for 21. Offense number 76, five-yard penalty. First down. We got Layden Robinson, the All-American guard, five-yard penalty. Holly? Well, we talked to Anaya Smith about why he's so athletic, why he has that wiggle, can do a little bit of everything. And he said he played a lot of different sports growing up. He said he played baseball, and he really thought that being an outfielder and a shortstop helped him, particularly the outfield helping him track the ball. Then he said he was a good hooper. He didn't play organized, but he played a lot with his boys. And he said, I like the basketball. I feel like it gave me some juke moves. I can really move my hips. I can bend. And he said all of those sports made him a well-rounded athlete here at AM. All about multi-sports basketball definitely looks like a point guard out there Johnson has some green grass takes off touch the football and takes a hit from DJ Ivy but again a very productive gain on first and long Yeah, making better decisions here in this second half and you know you love to see him work through his progressions and I think people that are going to be scouting Jimbo Fisher's offense with with Max Johnson now as a starter the assumption is is that 13 Haynes King if he comes in he's got the speed and he's the runner but as we're seeing Johnson isn't a runner but he's showing he can do enough to make you have to respect it this guy's a runner H and this time they get into the ground Miami has had a hard time tackling him as this game is worn on Keontre Smith got him that time notice those ends aren't collapsing on that zone read anymore that time the read was on Harvey 12. And he's a, he's threatened about Max Johnson pulling it, so he's staying outside. That's what opened up that initial hole. There's another third down. Clock bleeding away. Final minute of the quarter. As AM would love to continue to chew on this clock, build this lead. Smith, though, is going to be dropped for a loss on that third down play. Canes were ready for number six. They swarm in there. It's Antonio Moultrie is. One of the backups in that defensive line. And Kevin Steele is dialing up things, feeling the sense of urgency down 17 to 6, with Miami electing to kick the field goal. Still down 11 points. Man, again, it's so good to see Kevin Steele back coaching defense. But he dialed up some pressure that time on that third and short. Crowd is uh, urging Jimbo to go for it here. He's just going to let the rest of this third quarter tick away. And have an opportunity to. Move the chains, work on the clock, perhaps add some points, or he could try to pin Miami back. We'll talk about it. The final quarter coming up. The Aggies had a touchdown, the Canes a field goal, and we'll head to the final quarter with the margin 11. You're watching ESPN College Football Primetime. 
Welcome back to this presentation of the SEC on ESPN. I love the sway into the third quarter. Third largest in the history of this place, 107 245. Fisher decides to punt here, opening play of the final quarter, and pent the Canes back. Constantino has been precise, executed absolutely perfectly. On the hop, it's down at the one. He is a weapon. Go back to Columbus, Kirk. We'll see if the Badgers can put up a fight on the road in the horseshoe against Ohio State over on ABC at 7.30 Eastern time. Also on the app, CJ Stroud, I'll tell you. <laughs> I mean, you expect it against Toledo. It was a 28-14 game, and then I think, did they punt Ohio State? Uh, yeah, yeah I, don't, I don't think so. I think it was a big day for their offense. Wisconsin wins big today, so it sets up the big showdown. Both those teams always play, and, you know, a lot of times you feel like it's a potential preview of the Big Ten Championship, so it'll be, be go time. And Jimmy Leonard defense always tough. Let's see what happens here. Ball is pinned deep in Miami territory. Parrish with the carry. Jalen Knight was having his knee examined by the Miami trainers at the end of that last possession. So we'll see if he's able to return. Parrish I mean, muscles for about seven. Yeah, I thought he had about two, and he just wouldn't go down. You know, he's, a, he's an undersized back. When I say undersized, he's short, he, he, and he's not 220 pounds, but he runs like he's 215, 220 pounds. A lot of determination. And give it to him again. He makes a cut and gets the edge. And Parrish down the sidelines and shoved that across the 25 by Chappelle. But the Canes running game has given him some breathing room here. Boy, great vision here and then bounces it. And watch the block on the edge, 51 and 85. They kind of double team there. Nice job. The corner gets caught up on the inside, gives him even more room around that right edge. So we saw physicality and toughness by Parrish, and then this time the vision and the speed to be able to get to that edge. Tracking toward a third consecutive 100-yard game to open his Canes career. He's got 82 on the 15 carries. They fake it to him. Van Dyke looks downfield, and an inaccurate throw. Man, he had a man, Michael Redding, running wide open and just missed him. Yeah, and, and, and the offensive line did the, the best job that they could in protecting him. But eventually, you'll see the pressure work through. So he's waiting on this receiver to work all the way across. In order to do that, you need time. They're holding up. They're holding up. And then right before he throws it, you got that pressure that got into his face just enough to, I think, affect that accuracy. They haven't had receivers running free very often tonight. That time, Redding was open. Into the ballgame comes big fat Franklin. He is a 240-pound back. And he is met in the backfield and dropped for a loss, and it's going to be third and long. Well, Cooper doing a good job of getting downhill. The backer. DJ Scaife, the tackle, versatile veteran offensive lineman, is down on the field. Cristobal out himself to check on him. We'll step aside. Third and 11 when we come back. Student section, saluting student sections all across the country. You're going to find a larger student section. The 12 man, 37,000 football season tickets sold here. That's more than double Miami's enrollment. 37,000. That's outstanding. They got 65,000 on the campus here. So, third and 11. That student section trying to make some noise, make it tough for Van Dyke. They love football down here, don't they? They do. <laughs> they love sports, period. What can Gaddis do to get his quarterback comfortable to find someone to make a play here? They rush three. He's got time. It's a long throw. The catch is made, but short of the marker, I believe. Keyshawn Smith, are they going to give him forward progress? Wow. Hope was trying to push him back. They're spotting it at the they, 35. It is a first down. If you look right where he caught the ball, I mean, it's, it's right at the line. Ball brought him back. He ran a good route. The, the route was about a yard or two beyond the marker, but watch the ball bring him back. Yep, that's a good job. That, that looks like that's a first down. Bill agrees up here, so move those sticks. A crucial conversion with time running out in the margin 11 here. Looks like AM is going to call a timeout. Jimbo Fisher wants him to review it. He said, I'm challenging. 
call for the challenge. We'll take another look. It is an important play if they do rule it fourth down, but we think it's going to stand because the catch is made there, Bill. Yeah, he's got the ball right at the line to gain, and then he's hit and driven back. It, he didn't bring the ball back be on there by himself. That was because of the hit. There's the tackle after that's uh, that's well after the the catch was made. The important part is right there. Oh, this is a great look right here. There you go, Bill. What do you think of that? Oh, <laughs> well, that look that look puts it a little short. Does it? Think? Right, right there, he caught it. I don't know. I think, I think it okay, here's the question. The Everybody side. at home is asking: Is it is it where the ball is in his chest? If you go back and watch when he secures the ball, the ball looks like it's in his chest and it's beyond, beyond the mark, but his feet don't. Watch when he watch when he secures the ball. It's the ball, though. Yes, yeah, it's it's the ball, yeah. not his yeah. feet. He does not have any further challenges for the remainder of the game. So, the call does stand. Fisher with just two timeouts left, but sitting on an 11 point lead, took a chance there. In the meantime, Van Dyke still trying to create something downfield. And he will launch Smith. No chance. He was no just chance. caught up there. Jalen Jones has been active and busy all night. Well, not only is Jalen Jones over there, but you also have Jordan Gilbert, the, the safety. So that that play didn't. That was almost a wasted down. Play never had a chance on first and ten. Take me inside Van Dyke's head, Kirk, as a guy you know played quarterback. Yeah, what, you're, is, you're, is he feeling well? You, you know, got to even though you're point? in the fourth quarter, you still have to be patient. You can hit eight, ten, twelve yard routes and, and still get first downs. Move the ball down the field. Well, he gets hit as he delivers. Smith was the intended receiver but they came at him hard Edron Cooper slammed into him yeah they, they brought both the inside linebackers it freed up Cooper to be able to get there right as he threw the football nice clean hit ball goes a little bit high because of that pressure it looks like we have an A&M player down Chappelle the corner already depleted his secondary with the two young DBs suspended and then Damani Richardson Following Brian George is disqualified for targeting. Chappelle, a proven coverage guy. I don't know, interesting game. I, it, it's it's a methodical Miami offense. Things were very easy for him in the first couple of games. They expected it was going to be tricky in this environment against an inspired Aggie defense. But I think that the people in Miami watching this have, have not seen what they hope for from Gaddis and the new offense and a, and a very proven quarterback well keep in mind they, if you haven't seen the whole game they had they had some chances and they have hurt themselves it's tough to go on the road with a young team and and make mistakes they had Stevenson punt return that he mocked that led to AM points they've moved the ball into the red zone on three different occasions unable to put touchdowns on the board so they've had chances to be in this game and they're not out of it I mean 12 and a half minutes to go and down by 11 but they're running out of possessions exactly they need 10 to keep this drive alive on third down We've actually dealt with the crowd noise pretty well. It's been the Yankees scheme and athleticism and the lack of playmakers. It's been a bigger problem. And Dyke on the crossing route. Mallory makes the catch. It's a first down and the big long legged tight end gallops into AM territory. He's really their best weapon with Restrepo out. Yeah, and he's down. Looks like you know, th this was a great effort by him before he goes down there on the sideline. Just extra effort. Watch, watch, watch how this play opened up, and we'll take a look and see if Mallory is okay. But all three of these receivers are working this way, and Mallory is able to kind of get lost in the traffic. And what is impressive is a guy that is as big as he is, 6'5", 245 pounds, is able to outrun this safety right here because he potentially could be short of the first down marker, and then there's the effort. Then he goes down on the sideline there, brought down by Gilbert. So he landed right on the top of his head. Boom, that is a scary-looking landing as the head is just driven directly down into the turf. You can see he is moving his arm there. Well, it's certainly a good sign, but that is so scary. See not only the Miami 
trainers and doctors, but also you see the A&M folks over there with him as well. Well, we've got our sports injury analyst, Marty Jaramillo, joining us for the first time. Marty, without doing any long-distance diagnosis, what do you see from the training staff that might indicate their particular concern with Mallory at this moment? One of the scariest situations for any medical staff is seeing your athlete face down on the ground. Um, the video showed a direct hit onto his skull, obviously compressing uh, his neck as well. Great sign that he's uh, moving his hands, and now he's on his back, and they're able to uh, stabilize him now. This will be treated like a serious uh, cervical spine injury and um, transported as such. What, what are the steps they initially take when they get across and, and see a player who's landed like that? Well, first thing is making sure the, the, the basic steps of uh, first aid, airway, breathing, circulation. Um, as we can see, the, as we can see, he's coming up and he's, uh, he's up and he's more. I believe he shake his head. Yeah, that's certainly good news. I'm being helped yeah, to his feet. Great, great to see. Yeah, I know Marty who speaks for, for all the, the professionals in the athletic training department, the medical staff who do such a tremendous job across college football. And that is a huge relief to see him up and running off. It, yeah, it is. It, it's, it's always great news to see that, obviously. And, and it's something you always appreciate when you see the you go down into the A&M sideline and their, their training staff recognizing the, the potential severity of it right there before the Miami trainers and medical team could even come over. But Nonetheless, he is up and on the sideline, which is great. But they did pick up the first down there on that third down and long. It's a 21-yard game. They've converted two third and longs. And what is an urgent feeling drive. Now the Knighton is back in the game after having his knee checked out earlier. Picks up about three. You go back to your question about what can you do to get Van Dyke going. This has been a rough night for him. I mean, we, if you go back to the quarterback that we watched and Miami fans fell in love with last year with his nine starts, especially the last five or six, this guy was throwing easily over 300 yards a game. Now, again, he had Rambo and Harley to throw to. He's working with some new receivers. But even when he's had some open guys, he hasn't necessarily really been in sync and throwing with much rhythm tonight. I think you got to go to, the, again, those... Well, they go to Knighton here in the grind game, Kirk, and they're going to move the sticks. He's still fighting, and he'll be shoved out by a bunch of Aggies as they run into the bench there, and temper's flaring. But Knighton is giving him a spark. And, and sometimes when you have one back in Henry Parrish run with a little bit of attitude and, and some toughness, it affects other backs. And Knighton got off to a good start in this game, but he's been on the sideline, and it's opened it up an opportunity for Parrish. Parrish ran tough. And Knighton said, hey, when I get out there, I want to run tough. So kind of a contagious attitude right now in that Canes backfield. Drive that began back at the one-yard line. Moved it in 10 plays, 66 yards. Parrish spelling Knighton here. They fake it to him. Van Dyke is pressure, tries to escape, and tries to make something on the run. Just heaves it to the bench as he was hotly pursued by Antonio Johnson. Holly? Well, guys, one thing I'm noticing down here on the field is this Texas A&M secondary is getting very tired because of their issues tonight with suspensions and two guys out for targeting. They are very thin back there. In fact, Tyleek Chappelle, who had played every snap in this game before he went out injured, was starting to fade as well. And number 34, Isaiah Rex, the tackle just ran off holding his left arm. Some guys have to dig deep and play bigger roles than they're used to. And some guys who've never played yep. have to step out there like Moten and Anderson. And Dyke rolls and delivers, and that's George, Jacoby George, who's made a, a couple catches tonight in his first action of the season. There's a ball thrown with some authority from Van Dyke. You talk about how he likes to throw from the pocket. He's got enough ability to be able to athletically get outside and, and throw. What I like is he's decisive. He sees that cushion, takes advantage of it, get the ball out there quickly, and let a very athletic guy like George be able to make somebody miss. Will Mallory back in the game, Kirk, and oh, lined up good. on the right. This is a first down play. Again on the move, Van Dyke looking to create. Flips it to Mallory very short. Man, from being yeah. a scary situation a few minutes ago, he's out there making catches and running around. Yeah. Great to see. Yeah, Short gain is. there. And, and a fifth-year senior, right? I mean, it, it, this guy wants to be part of turning this Miami program back to being a, a winning team. He's going to, along with the other Miami seniors, trying to do everything they can to try to give themselves a chance to win this game. Yeah, and showcase himself for the next level. He's of an NFL ability tight end. Picks it off. That's Mallory again. And he's going to be slung down there by Gilbert. 
And it'll be third down. Good tackle on yeah, the big fella in the open field. Good job by, by Gilbert, who is in his first uh, year as a starter back in the back end. They talked to DJ Dirk, and he said, you know, hey, coach, it's early in the year, coming off a tough loss. What's the strength of this defense? He said, without a doubt, it's the front, but then it's our safeties. Antonio Johnson, Gilbert, and Damani Richardson, who is out of this game with targeting. Here we go again, Kirk. Miami in the red zone, needing six on third down. Bunched to the right are three receivers. And Dyke looking that direction, delivers underneath, and his parachute makes the catch, but is knocked down immediately by Antonio Johnson, who is down on the field. A big collision and a fourth down decision coming up. Yeah, don't really understand this route at all. And you, you, this is a team that is, when they've gotten down to the red zone, they cannot get to the sticks, they cannot get to the end zone. And third down on that play, you just don't give yourself a chance at all to pick up a first down. And you don't go for the first down on fourth down. Again, Borregales has been very busy tonight. Two for four. This from 34 to try to make it a one possession game. And just does sneak it through that right up white. They move from the one to the red zone in 16 plays, but again settle for three. Eight point game, 8.32 to left. Inside Kyle Field and inside the AT&T 5G Skycam. Don't forget to check out the AT&T 5G Skycast streaming on the ESPN app and ESPN3. So Miami Kirk, four red zone trips, three field goals and a blocked field goal. I don't know if Mario Cristobal uses analytics to help shape his game management decisions whether to go for or try for three-pointer. But I, I don't know. I mean, you, you settle for three again. You're, you're down eight. So what you got to do is get a stop, do what you haven't done all night, score a touchdown, and then get a two-point play to force right. overtime. Right. And, and look, you, you talk about they've had opportunities four times inside the 29 plays, eight yards, three field goals, no touchdowns, and very conservative third down play calling in those red zone areas. They've run 30 plays in Aggie territory. They've run 22 more plays, not quite App State-like, but they've won the possession keep-away battle. They've outgained AM by 85 yards or so, and they're down because of the red zone. Yep. And the one now they're, now they're short touchdown on, drive set up by the Muff. Right, relying on Kevin Steele and this defense to come up with a stop, get the ball back. And then, like you said, it's something they've not been able to do all night. Get the ball in the end zone, and then for fun, get the two-point conversion. <laughs> to get to overtime. To get to overtime. Yeah, I mean, I, again, I, I, huge, huge difference between seven and three. And even if they're not easy to convert on the Aggie defense, I, I think those, those decisions will be pondered in the 305. A chain, meanwhile, had a really effective start to this game. We made some couple runs after halftime. But the quarterback of the defense, Corey Flagg, good job at diagnosing, working through some of those linemen, trying to get up to him and lowering the boom there. They're, put, they're crowding this line of scrimmage, expecting run with the safeties and the backers. 24 Kinchins in there, too. Corey Flagg, one of the Texans, plays for the Canes here. A guy who, get this, hunts and then grills iguanas. Wow. It's kind of a I didn't know you could do Florida that. thing. Yeah. You, you can do, do it that? if you want to. Is that big down there? Not big but it's done <laughs> Johnson on the pocket delivers and the catch is made underneath by Lane who's knocked down at the 30 you and Jan are down. doing that there's so many other nice things to eat down there I have not partaken in <laughs> but they are a pest though I'll say that how about that tackle in the open field that's not an easy thing to do against I Smith. is he an impressive athlete he may end up as a linebacker before he's done but he's a 6'5 225 safety out of Fort Lauderdale five star at a heritage high school Here, here's a big third down very big Johnson across the middle he just bounced the ball knocked down after the throw so the pressure was part of it you'll Keith Brown was the intended man but they'll have to punt took a page out of Vic Fangio put five guys up there to create one-on-one -on -one opportunities to try to get that pressure somebody's got to win with those not necessarily a blitz but it's five walked up to get the one-on-one -on -one chances and it affects 
Max Johnson not a great throw that time on third down. So the Aggies don't burn much clock a very quick drive and they'll punt it back to Miami. Constantino another booming punt very high and the fair catch is made by Stevenson. So Miami a long way from the end zone but still hanging around seven to six to go here in College Station. So Van Dyke and the Canes still in this thing. They need a touchdown this time though and a long throw and a catch made for a first down at the 44 by Keyshawn Smith. How about that line? That, that play took forever. He had about four and a half, five seconds to be able to make this throw. Make sure he got his arms underneath that. Looks like he did, but great protection there. Well, the crowd wants him to take a peek. They've already snapped the ball. Fisher used his one challenge earlier and it was unsuccessful. Keynes did snap that perhaps with this replay in mind. Let's see. Mm, looks like it's squeezed through. Really, you think the that ground. slid through there? Think they got away with one? They may have gotten away with one there. But it looks like he did get his arms down initially it like it squeezed through Might have gone through. Yeah. They didn't buzz down quickly and Miami was pretty shrewd to run a play fast. Van Dyke across the middle and that's Mallory who's really getting involved here in the fourth quarter. First down into Aggie territory. Nice with the running back. You clear the running back out, and then you open up a nice throwing lane. Nobody left in the middle. It's a one on one matchup with a linebacker against Will Mallory, and Mallory's going to win that matchup. That time it was against Cooper. Trying to get to the edge. Flag down. Fadil Diggs got him. It was as he was being pursued. Holding. Holding. Offense number 85. 10 yard penalty. First down. He got Mallory on the hold. He was guilty of one last week as well. He got a hold of against it. Anderson. So like he got a hold of his face mask. I sewed him there. Grabbed onto the jersey. And it's costly. And the spot foul moves the ball all the way back to the Miami 43. See Diggs there. The fatigue now in the fourth quarter. It's a humid night. First and 20. Pitch to the sidelines incomplete. Tightly covered with Smith there by Chappelle. And they are roll DJ Durkin is rolling those corners up trying to challenge these receivers on every throw Chappelle's a guy they believe in they think he could be one of their top corners he walked right up into the face of this receiver that time Smith affected the timing see him he's down at the bottom again don't want to give anything easy away. And a long throw catch made and a flag comes in again in the holding zone. Michael Redding made the catch but Jeff Heiser has more bad news for Miami. Holding offense number 60. Second down. DJ Scaife went out at right tackle injured so yeah. Zion Nelson has slipped over to that side yeah. and he was guilty of the hold. Nelson came in early in the game for John Campbell 74 and because of Scaife being out he's got to show the versatility to go from the left to the right not necessarily an easy thing to do with your technique and look at that right hand get up around the neck there of Overton two holding penalties have created a second and 30 they're going to get to the Aggie 37 but they're could do a good job of rotating a lot of bodies trying to stay fresh up front and it's worked they're winning that battle in the pass pro. Rush four here. Throw underneath. Kobe George picks up about six. It will be third down in a mile. And they can do without Antonio Johnson. You talked about guys digging deep, stepping up and playing a role. They're going to rush three, drop eight, make it tough on him in coverage. 
Takes off. Chances of scrambling on it in third and 24 are nil. And uh, it's a fourth down. So they, the two holding penalties back to back dooming that drive. I can't help but go back to the opening drive of the second half. They they had to use a costly penalty because they weren't getting the ball snapped. The play clock was running down. They wasted a penalty. Now you're at two or wasted a timeout. Now you're at, uh, at two timeouts in under four minutes to go. Yeah, they're, they're, they're really working the clock here. Yeah, no urgency to punt it away. Not sure what's going on here. Boy, Headley just thumps it deep and see if the Miami coverage team can corral it. They do and be backed up with the one. There is a flag down line of scrimmage far side of the field. So we'll see if maybe they took off too soon. Could be an illegal formation. They had a three protectors. Headley, do they have enough guys on the line? Illegal formation. Kicking team one and five in the back, four in the backfield. And five guys in the backfield. Fourth down. One man was lined up off the line. Yep. So that's a good play by the punter that uh, is wiped away. Right here. There's the, the, the fifth. You have the punter back here, then you've got three more there. It's a total of five. You only have four in the backfield. You know, Miami's going to, if they end up losing this game, they're going to go back and look at some of these miscues and they're going to try to learn from them in, early in the year. But uh, it's, it's frustrating, I'm sure, for Mario when they go back and look because there's been some, some they, they had them pinned at the one yard line. I mean, at 320 to go in this game. Yeah, negated a 55 yard punt. Let's see what Headley can do with another chance. It's a, another good kick, very high. And it's Bobble! The scramble for the football down inside the 10. Oh, it's a wrestling match. It is, it is a big time wrestling match. Two guys fight. They're still fighting for it right now. Well, this is an enormous moment in the game. And Texas A&M wins that wrestling match. How did Anaya Smith, Anaya Smith. That back? How did he fumble? In the oh, yeah, but I'm just, I mean, I, that happens. But how in the world did he get it back? This ball right there, you're thinking Miami's got it right there. But Anaya Smith gets on top of it for the Aggies and saves them. Wow. What a scene in Boone. Now back to College Station. Chris Fowler, Kirk Herb Street. The fourth turn, Scotty. It's a chain breaking free. He'll move the chains. What a heart and mouth moment for the Aggie land here. Anaya Smith somehow chooses to field that punt, not fair catch it, not let it bounce in the end zone, muffs it, and then wins a wrestling match with Porter to yeah, maintain yeah, possession. Not, not, not a, probably a great decision to, to, to try to bring it in, but this guy's a veteran. I mean, he's reliable, right? He's If you can't trust him, you can't trust anybody on your team. Made a mistake. What you love is the way he didn't give up on it, fought back and showed that toughness, no strong hands to be able to bring that ball back. So now the Aggies would love to just chew on clock and run this game out. A chain tries to get back to the line of scrimmage and he'll get about a yard of it. Cristobal a couple of timeouts to work with here. Doesn't spend one here. He's going to try to hold that those these two timeouts and really it comes down to this. This series right here, this sequence of plays. They'll get out of here if they do hold this lead with the hard earned W. It'll ease some of the tension in this area. They're, they're not going to get too excited about the offense out of this game. It's 268 yards. Max Johnson, 10 for 20, made some clutch throws in the second half, made some plays with his legs. Sure did. The defense, terribly shorthanded, has risen up. They've been on the field a lot more than they'd like. And now a change going to be again knocked down behind the line of scrimmage. Now the timeout will be spent with a minute 26. Now a quick word from Cheese it I feel the cheesiest, but the chain puts the extra cheese on the cracker. It's here. 
Look at this. It's the cheesiest chain. This is the cheesiest day of my life. Cheesy. Feeling the cheesy. So a chain has has earned his 88 yards. Now it's third and 12. What do you call it? I guess here? it depends on the lens and how you want to look at it. The fans at home want to look at it. You could say, well, the offenses have been that great. But I'll tell you what, man, for, for Kevin Steele coming into Miami with a, as a new defensive coordinator, DJ Durkin coming into Texas AM as a new defensive coordinator, and the season will play out and we'll see. But you gotta like the way these defenses are playing on both sides of the football early in the year. And and learning a new scheme in DJ Durkin's case he's got a depleted secondary playing with guys they probably didn't expect to play tonight but all in all everybody's holding up and playing pretty good so I think it's a combo the offense is trying to find themselves but the defenses are balling tonight playing great absolutely no doubt and a lot of guys on the AM side being pressed into duty they've got their Jumbo package backfield in there. Crown over and Johnson. You're gonna throw this, you're gonna run it and make him use that last time out. Well, this is their short yardage <laughs> formation. <laughs> you're gonna make him spend the time out. Yeah, but I mean you could you could play action at, of, of course with Jimbo, you never know, but he decides to make Mario use that last time out. So now you're gonna get the ball back out of timeouts with a, a little over a minute to go. Yeah, it's been interesting. I mean He's been relying on his defense. I mean, special teams mistakes, a normally reliable kicker in Bora Gallus that left six points on the field. One long one he missed, and the other one was blocked. But, you know, to hang around on the road and now ask your offense to come up with uh, some big plays in, in the final minute and a half to win it. I mean, it, you're always going to be second guess when things don't work out. The bottom line is, it, at least you've given yourself a chance here in this fourth quarter to, to potentially get this game into overtime. Now, again, it's going to be it's going to be a challenge. You got a quarterback that can get that can throw it. I'm not worried about Van Dyke. You're worried about can the receivers get some separation? Can they get open and give him a chance? And can the line protect when it's an obvious passing situation? Can Constantino continue his brilliant punting? Tyreek Stevenson, whose muff did set up AM's first score, would love a chance to create something here as a returner. If the Aussie gives him a chance. Lefty boot is high. Stevenson, no fair catch, has some space for a second, and then they close down and hammer him. And Miami will begin from the 43. Minute 16, no timeouts. Pretty good field position. Pretty good field position here for Miami. And they're going to have to do something they haven't done all night. Put the ball in the end zone. They've been moving the ball. Many, we've seen them four times in that red zone and unable to score like you just talked about. Can they drive and can they put it in the end zone when it matters most? Tariq Chappelle is back in at corner. And Dyke looks to his left, makes a throw to the sidelines, and it's Bouchard Smith who makes a man miss and scoots for a first down into Aggie territory. Pretty good job there, being able to get around the true freshman, Jared Kerr. Lexington High School in Texas able to get around him with his speed and get out of bounds most importantly good positive game there but for Van Dyke on first first play of this drive no pressure now he retreats and makes the throw to the bench Again, nobody open. He had a lot of time initially. So the first play where they, they pick up some yards, it was more of a, a zone, keeping everybody back deep. Second play after a successful play, they, they're, they're walked up. They didn't necessarily blitz, but they walked up six up close, kind of spying and waiting to see if he would try to pull up, maybe hit an underneath throw. Let's see if they dial up any pressure. Or they continue to play a little more soft and conservative on the shell. See two safeties back deep. You got three true freshmen on the field right now the Aggie defense in the secondary and Dyke across the middle and it's broken up breaking up the play is one of the veterans out there I guess a sophomore qualifies as a veteran it's Cooper it's probably true right now in this in this case two safeties deep you got linebackers and corners that are locked up in man to man just playing a man under with two deep nobody open pretty good coverage there Again, who can get separation against man-to-man -man coverage? Who Mallory is lined up in the slot, Kirk, to the left. Big man right there. And a whistle before the snap. And Fisher will spend a timeout on defense. 
getting a look at the offense on this third down play. Of course, they got two plays to get the 10 yards. I mean, just to remind people, we keep talking about it, but I think it's so important. Damani Richardson out with targeting the leader of the back end. Saw Antonio Johnson, the other leader, plays nickel. He is out of the game. Uh, you have Brian George, who is eliminated from the game because of targeting. Devin Harris did not even suit up tonight. Uh, you know, you, you've got a bunch of guys down right now. Antonio Johnson's been yeah, I mentioned in the medical that. tent. Yeah, I mean. yeah, so you got you you got a lot of these freshmen that are being asked to play right now. And they're going in a two-minute drill against a pretty qualified quarterback. See who Van Dyke can trust, who can get that separation, Kirk. You talk about in these tight spaces. And they're sitting back now, rushing three. Again, playing some zone. Knighton out of the backfield makes the catch. He'll be wrestled down in, by Jalen Jones. It's fourth down clock in, running. In bounds. Did not get out of bounds. Got to make your fourth down call quickly here, but more importantly, you got to gain four yards. Look at the hesitation, the confusion. Clock tick, tick, tick. This is why you do these drills in camp. Here's the ball game. And it's incomplete. Delivered it under duress. Brashard Smith off his hands. Drops have been a problem for this receiving core since the beginning of training camp. And the Aggies are going to survive. Uh, just from just from the beginning, the play is inbounds. The clock is ticking. There's hesitation. There's confusion. Here's the route right here. It's actually a pretty good route. The ball is already out. Van Dyke does his job. Look where the ball hits him. Right in the face mask. Ball couldn't have not been thrown any better. Pressure's on. There's the separation. He did what he needed to do, but it didn't it just feel discombobulated? It, it felt frantic, not from Van Dyke, but from the players around him. Kind of the theme tonight of the game when it came to the passing game. The receivers aren't mature enough to handle these kind of situations yet. Yeah, you, you needed to get that four yards to, to keep the game alive, but the clock was ticking down. You're, you're facing a dilemma there. And, you know, without Xavier Restrepo, we talked about it all night. The top target, the roommate of Van Dyke, the guy that he trusts, the guy that he worked with all summer long to develop that chemistry, that timing for routes just like that, it has been a struggle. But even it may when, be a struggle until seven was, gets well, back. Well, even when seven comes back, Restrepo, you, you still need others besides he and Will Mowry. I mean, if they're going to really compete with a quarterback like this, the line did a pretty good job tonight. The backs are running pretty good. The development of the receivers as a group, even with Restrepo back, is going to tell you what kind of year they're going to have offensively in this new system of Josh Gaddis. Back home from Middle Tennessee State, then a bye, then the ACC opener against North Carolina. And the Aggies get a win in front of the third largest crowd ever to ease some of the sting of last week. Jimbo Fisher continues to have success against Miami, 8-1 and one in his career. And let's go down to Holly with Jimbo. Well, Coach Fisher, you had to make some difficult decisions this week, and one of them was pulling your quarterback. How do you describe how Max Johnson came in and performed? I thought he did a really nice job. He led the team, played with poise, and didn't try to take things that weren't there. Made some plays when he was there. We got to get a lot better, but he led us to victory and did the things we had to do, and our defense played outstanding. I thought Devon A. Shane was so terrific for you tonight. How do you describe the burst that he gives you? He's just an unbelievable athlete. He can catch and run, and he's a very diverse guy. Nice, played really good. We have a lot of those guys like that. We just got to get to use them more and do a better job. You had to make a hard stand tonight and help some young men grow up. How hard was it, though, when you kept seeing DB after DB go out of this game? It is. We got to we got to do what's right. There's, you got to do things right, no matter what the circumstances are. I think we help us. We got to get everybody on the same page and doing those things. And I right, guess sometimes mistakes are made, but we're growing. And that's what kids do. But uh, you know, we, we our team showed a lot of heart and a lot of guts today. To beat a team like Miami that's on the come up, how do you describe what this does coming off that loss last week? You're exactly right. Show that. Say I say fear does two things. Fear, fear everything and run or face everything and rise. And that's what we did, and we got to keep doing it. We got to get a lot better, though. Thanks, Coach. Thank you. Outgained by 128 yards, but much better in the red zone. I think, obviously, I, I really applaud Jimbo Fisher after coming off a loss to Appalachian State. You have four players who are very talented that could have helped him tonight. They're not going to follow the rules. He used to sit some out and takes on the Miami Hurricanes. It wasn't pretty. It's a win. Maybe a win can start to spring them in a, in a, in a much better direction because right now the offense still trying to find itself, even with Max Johnson in there. Not home again for six weeks. Arkansas in Arlington, then three SEC road games, including 
that game in Tuscaloosa that you may have heard some about in the offseason. So it's going to be a tough road ahead for the Aggies, but they get a satisfying non-conference W over the Hurricanes tonight. We enjoyed it from Kyle Field, the game produced by Bill Bennell, directed by Derek Mobley. We thank our entire crew for Kirk, Holly, Todd, and Marty. Chris Fowler saying so long from College Station Sports Center. Scott Van Pelt coming up right now.